Over the past few years, we have touched upon many of the amazing and often extremely ancient sites which dot our Earth. Many of these spectacular achievements, indicating to the countless specialists, archaeologists, geologists, and others involved, attempting unraveling of their true history, their true story of antiquity. On several occasions, we have been confronted with compelling and often conclusive explorative analysis, which has often resulted in the retrieval of compelling supportive artifacts which have supported the claim of them surviving past cataclysm, often accompanied by an ice age. Our sharing of this data has regularly received a mixed reception. The Sphinx, for example, which shows clear evidence of surviving this past event and subsequent ice age, which involved a flood event. We saw that many were interested in this premise, yet not convinced of such claims. However, a gentleman known as Mario Bildraps has taken this theory and, if confirmed to be correct in his preliminary findings, may have established it as a fact beyond all possible doubt. A link to his website will, of course, be in the description. Mario, it seems, has been very busy. He has correlated the orientation of over 500 ancient pyramids and temples randomly spread around the world to what he claims is a 99% accuracy to the temperature changes during the last glaciation cycles. Most ancient structures, therefore, he has concluded, are hundreds of thousands of years old and not just a few thousand. Many of the pyramids and temples have been renovated over the millennia, new structures forming on top of older foundations, while the orientation of these foundations remain unchanged. Chichen Itza and Baalbek are two good examples of this practice. He states that the proof is mathematically backed up from start to finish. He adds, the orientation of a building is purely mathematical, because orientation is dimensionless or not materialistic. When we process the orientations of virtually all ancient buildings around the world, it reveals a profound discovery. He claims his research is so new, so innovating, that you won't find anything like this anywhere else, except maybe some copies of this original material on other websites. About 57% of the 501 randomly spread ancient structures that were involved in this research accumulate massively in five clusters of together just 20 degrees or 22.2% along the intersection line. This line is also a purely mathematical entity that runs from our current North Pole to our current South Pole along a longitude of 47.1 degrees west. It appears a big chunk of his research has been directed towards developing a cardinal reference line, an imaginary line drawn upon the globe which could be used to match ancient structures to a past location of the cardinal points. Of course, if his mathematics can be peer-reviewed and ultimately found to be correct, he could truly be onto something. His research will not only push back the theories involving the chronological development of man, but also prove beyond doubt pre-Columbian voyage up to a half a million years ago, among many other startling realities. The collective orientation of contemporary buildings points almost exactly at our current geographic pole. You might say that the collective unconscious orients itself to the geographical pole, or as many people would say, to the sun. The more data you gather, whether it's in a region, one country, one continent, or the whole world, the more obvious it becomes that contemporary buildings add up to the geographic pole. There is no contemporary culture defined that has a preference for a specific orientation other than a cardinal orientation. It is undoubtedly interesting research, which we implore you to peruse further. We will keep you posted on future developments regarding Mario's work. There are many theories attempting to explain the origins of the Great Sphinx and indeed its original purpose. We have, in the past, covered the compelling theories regarding an ancient celestial alignment to the Great Sphinx. Most popular among these alternative theories concerning the star constellation Leo. However, this theory is not only based upon events which happened over two precessions ago but is also reliant upon the Great Sphinx actually once being that of an enormous lion. And although lions are mentioned in countless religious texts, 
ancient and also modern, with these beasts attributed to good deeds or evil, there actually exists another, and we feel more compelling theory regarding the Sphinx's true identity, purpose, and indeed its age. Since its rediscovery among the sands of Egypt, the Sphinx has been attributed to that of a guardian, long said to have protected the dead, and interestingly, this explanation may turn out to have been spot on. The Sphinx, although now possessing a human head, its form is noticeably out of proportion. If one indeed perceives it as a past guardian of the dead, and the underworld in which they dwell, then the Sphinx would have been in fact a dog, or more specifically, Anubis. Additionally, if the Sphinx did once indeed face a star in our night skies, then logically, there would only be one of two stars in which the dog would face, both held in high regard for untold millennia, one of which of course being Sirius, the other known as the little dog star Procyon. Interestingly, the star Sirius is held in high regard by many ancient cultures, some which insist that we were once visited by gods, locating from this particular star constellation. And with ancient Egyptian art drenched in mysterious beings, all attributed as gods who came from the heavens, it could be postulated that the Sphinx was guarding the entrance to what they perceived as the underworld or the realm in which the gods came from. What supports this theory and the possible concealment of this knowledge is the apparent destruction, and now absence, of any identifiable dog-like sphinxes left anywhere on Earth. Anthony West once brought the water controversy theory into the public domain, a theory he has done extremely well from. This evidence has long been used as a form of evidence that the sphinx is much older than currently claimed, and due to the absence of this erosion on the Great Pyramids, also used it to claim it is much older. Additionally, he has also been a verbal advocate for the belief that the Sphinx was a lion. Worrying, however, regarding his motives, if this were indeed the case, then any compelling connections with the function of the Sphinx, the entrance beneath, and the pyramids, each made to specific sizes in relation to the distance of Orion's stars, would be merely impossible to make. However, and what is most concerning, is that with a little research of ancient texts, it soon becomes apparent that the Sphinx was once surrounded by a body of water, conveniently named the Lake of the Jackal, or Anubis Lake. This aptly named body of water has seemingly been covered up, not only by West, but to attempt to conceal the Sphinx's real age, but also its true identity. This fragment of information not only discredits West's profitable rainfall theory, but also virtually confirms the Sphinx's past identity, and with Anubis being named elsewhere as the guardian of the underworld, it becomes apparent that we are on the brink of an explanation for its original purpose, no matter how astonishing.